Hi everybody, it's Chris here. How are you doing? And a big welcome back to our live series, Excel VBA, Real World Problems and Solutions. Yes, I've got 30 situations that I've encountered countless time in my career doing Excel, Excel VBA development projects. And I've taken those 30 situations, translated them into 30 little solutions that we're gonna go through in 30 sessions in about 30 minutes. That's the idea of the series, guys. It's a great intermediate level Excel VBA course, I would say. If you've done a little bit of code, you're looking to push on and crucially to understand to understand how to apply VBA code to real world problems, this is the place to be. Uh, so a big welcome to you. We're on part 23 now, guys. So we're getting through this series. And what can I say? I, I do think it's a tremendous resource even if I'm blowing my own trumpet there, um, 30 sessions, 15 hours of content, well over 15 hours, because as, as usual, I've been going over 30 minutes and um, we'll make the download files um, accessible as well. Now, if you're watching on replay, um, thank you for watching, of course, and just go ahead, skip ahead, because I'm going to say hello to people with building a nice little community around this series. I'm going to go ahead and say hello to people so the learning content comes in a couple of minutes. So who's with us today? Jeffrey's with us, tuning in from across the pond again. So it's been great to have you with us this series, Jeffrey. I know you've watched most of the sessions. Big welcome to you. Jazz is with us. Now, Jazz is one of our members, Monday members. And yesterday, it was Monday, we had members Monday. So twice a month, we have our live members Monday session. And um, Jazz kind of, uh, it's been like a therapy session for me because I was... Uh, had a minor rant about the Excel influencer community. That's the kind of thing we get, get up to in Members Monday. What can I say? But thanks for listening to uh, to all that jazz. Big welcome to Lee. Uh, how are you doing, Lee? Any uh, football analysis going on today? And Carol is here as well. So, Carol, I don't think you're a... a um, I don't think I've seen you before on the channel, so a big welcome. And what are you trying to get done in Excel, Carol? Let us know. We're here to help and, and the rest of the community is as well. Michael's here again. How you doing, Michael? It's great to see you yesterday in Members Monday. Uh, Albert saying big well to Albert. Albert, and for the for the first time, I can confidently say for the first time on the channel, people are speaking Afrikaans in the chat. What about that? We're not just talking VBA today. Um, all kinds of languages going on. Fantastic stuff. Henrik, how are you doing? Good to have you back with us. And Keith is tuning in. Welcome, Keith. How are you doing? Katie's tuning in again. Always good to see you, Katie. Thanks for all your motivational comments. And uh, Lee is saying, um, yeah, I took the format thing from the content the other day and applied it to some football sheets. Save lo lots of code and process time. That's what it's all about this series. You know, it's really practical stuff. And Lee's referring to a session, I think three or four sessions ago, so maybe part 19 around there, where we looked at how to use VBA to format cells. So, so fantastic stuff, Lee. Always good to hear that. And uh, we've got the random problem generator out. So that doesn't mean I've wheeled out my life partner or my child or my favorite colleague. It means I'm showing you an Excel file that randomly chooses some information. And I've got a video for you if you're enjoying these sessions. Um, it's on the website. It's called The Secrets of the Random Task Generator. So there's a really interesting mechanism in this file using random numbers uh, probability distribution v lookup. It's called Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, there's a 40 minute tutorial. It's on the website. So you put your email in and you'll get an automated email about our members Monday uh, learning community. So if you don't want that, don't sign up for it. You can sign up for it. Have a look at uns unsubscribe from our, uh, our mailing list. Um, right, we're looking good. Let's get the random problem selector started. Looking a bit lonely, isn't it? Looking a bit lonely on the sheet. We've only got eight problems left, and we have worked through such a range of problems. I've, I've got to say, um, so if you go through this whole series from start to finish, you'll be very well set professionally in terms of VBA. Uh, Carol's saying, I'm doing crime analysis. Wow, I want to improve the automation and learn quite a bit from your videos. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, if you're talking about automation and by automation, what I understand about that is you've got some processes, some manual processes, usually involving copy pasting between sheets and files. You're doing that in Excel. You're doing it every day. You're thinking there must be a better way. That's um, automation. That's what we can do with VBA. Right. Here comes the winning ball. Okay, the winner is get the row in a range of a target value using match. I shouldn't have put that in there, should I? I shouldn't have put that in. 
get the row and range of a target value. So we're doing this all the time. We're working with data sets yesterday. Actually, it dovetails nicely with yesterday's session because in yesterday's session, uh, we looked at how to find the dimensions in a data set. So in a data set, you might want to add some data to a row for any number of reasons. You know, it's a very common thing to want to do in Excel to locate the row that a piece of data is on. Hmm. How about that? Locate the row that a piece of data is on. Um, how would we do that? So how would you do that in Excel? And as I said, I gave you, gave you a clue to begin with. How would you do that if you were using VBA? Mm, you want to match to a row. Absolutely fundamental skill. So as always, let's create a little um, random data set here. So I'll see if I can get everybody in today. Uh, so we've got Lee, we've got Keith. Keith tuning in from Rhode Island. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Carol is in. Uh, Katie is in. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I did kind of give it away, did, didn't I, Katie? But um, sometimes I need to put those in there to remind myself which direction to go in because on more than one of these, I've gone off in completely the wrong direction and then spent the whole second half of the stream wheeling around, wheeling around <laughs> to actually teach what, I was supposed to teach. So I've given myself a bit of help there. Albert's in, uh, Henrik's in. Have we got everybody in? I don't want to miss anybody today. Um, I'm going to pop myself in there. And uh, Michael, of course. Right, if you're watching and you want to get into the data set, now's the time, guys. Now is the time to put a little message in the chat. I think that's everybody. Okay, very good. So we've got our data set here. Uh, so we've got our name. Let's have let's have let's have birthday month today. Mm. Now clearly this is fictional. You don't don't put your birthday month in the chat. Okay, <laughs> this is fictional. Alt H W here and Control B. Um, how would you find somebody's birthday somebody's birthday month? Well, anything um, to do with dates tends to be a bit of a nightmare in Excel. So I'm just going to say. A random number between one and twelve, um, and then can can you easily convert that to a to a month? How would you convert that to a month? What does the month formula give us? Returns the month from a number. I don't know. That's that's not going to work, is it? Okay, no, bad idea. Okay, so yeah, we've got birthday month. So that's just going to be a number for now. How could I easily convert that number to the month? You know, this, this isn't a rhetorical device in my teaching. I'm as, asking you, how would you convert that to a month? So we're just going to say birthday month number. There we go. And then we're going to say birthday day. Uh, control B here. Okay, so run between, let's say, 1 and, and 28. A sneeze coming on there. Um, getting some late season hay fever. It does happen. Control C, Control V here. Birthday month, birthday day. Okay. Have I sent a birthday card? Birthday card. Now, this is just for teaching purposes, of course. I can't send birthday cards to everybody on the channel. Um, have I sent a birthday card? So, uh, yes or no. You could just put yes or no's in. Um, I'm going to use equals if here. So if a random number between 0 and 1 is less than 0 0.5, then we're going to say no. And if that's not true, we'll go to the other side of the condition, conditional statement and say yes. Okay, random and is less than 0 0.5. There we go. Yeah, so random data generation here, control D, control C, control V, V. Okay, just a small data set there. And once again, I totally acknowledge, you know, this 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 is contrived here. Um, text and M, 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 M. Okay, let, let's give this a go. I just want to test this thing about the date. So if I say text and the value and then M, 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 so I want 8 to convert to August. Is, is that going to happen? Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't quite work, does it? It's going to make them all January. Yeah, because um, Excel understands this 
this date, uh, it, it's understanding it as one of the, the day codes. Yeah, if we change this to the short date, you can see Excel's understanding that as the 1st of January 1900. So Excel's calendar starts at 1900. We're eight days into that calendar. So we're on the 8th of January 1900, which is why it's returning um, January there. Um, so I, I don't know. It's, it's, is there a way to do that? Okay, we've got some ideas here. So try it, try it out, guys. You know, once again, I don't want to get sidetracked today. Um, but give that a go. You know, the more work you can do with dates and months, years, anything like that in Excel, that's that's one way to uh, really boost you, your Excel practice. Okay, so let's say we want to locate an entry, possibly to change one of the inputs for that entry you know a very common thing to want to do you might say well chris you know i've only got 10 entries there or so exactly 10 um it'd be really easy to do it manually absolutely but this is only a sample data set and what if you had 1000 10000 entries something like that so we want to locate an entry in the data set and the question is um how to do this how to do this with a formula, although with a formula, you wouldn't actually be able to edit the data set. You'll be able to do that with v VBA, of course. How to do this with VBA? Hmm. I can think of a couple of approaches with VBA, and I can also see us pulling in some of the themes and techniques from the last five or six sessions here. Okay. Hmm. How to do this one? Let's get some ideas going then how to do this one, you know, and as always on the channel with Excel practice more generally, there's no one way to do it right. I can think of multiple possible approaches. In your practice, it's a case of you don't need to know everything. That's not what I'm saying. But in your practice, it, it's really important to understand that, appreciate the different approaches, appreciate the pros and cons, and choose the right one for you. Mm. Yeah, this, Lee, don't worry, this is how I would have done this. Yeah, so if you want to convert these these month numbers to actual uh, months, Jan, February, convert it to the text, yeah, the kind of longhand way would be to create some kind of lookup table and then just do a view lookup. You know, that's how I would have done it. But I've got some feeling that there's some kind of list in Excel. There's some kind of automatic list that you might be able to reference here. I'm not quite finding the language, but there's some kind of facility um, where Excel has some lists saved and you could somehow reference that. One of them is 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 the months. So how to do this one? Ah, and, and Katie is saying that Keith's um, solution works well. Cell number times 29. Okay. Ah, yes. Yeah, so why does Keith's solution work? Nice. Nice. Yes. Is that going to work? Keith, is that going to work for February if there's a leap year because you've used 29 there? I'm not absolutely sure. That's a very nice workaround solution, you know, not a purist solution, but a classic workaround solution that people see in spreadsheets all the time. Um, I won't go through it now, but just try yourself. Try to understand the concept. Why are we multiplying by, by 29? If we multiply by 29, how far through the year does that get us? Yeah, I love that really practical solution. That's that's what it's all about. And Keith, you are getting mad props here. You are getting mad props, my friend. So fantastic stuff. But back on topic, how would you do that? How would you do this one then? Mm, we want to locate an entry in this data set. So we're saying, okay, we, we want to edit Jeffrey's data. And as I said, we've got to suppose we've got a bigger data set than this, because obviously it would be easy to do it with 10 entries. Although even that might become onerous if you're doing it every day. Um, so what about ideas here? <laughs> I'm, try, I'm trying to wrestle back this stream, but it, it's, it's very difficult because we're getting some superstar contributions about dates. We've got another idea coming in here. So maybe we'll do a stream about dates. You could very easily do, do a stream about dates, of course. Okay, so let's think about the concept. If we're looking to locate an entry in a range, then conceptually, what formula is going to help us do that? Mm. Locate an entry in a range. Well, this is going to mean match. Match is going to help us do this. So this is a VBA series, so we're going to look at the VBA solution, of course. 
But often with VBA and particularly with application.worksheet function, which is what we're going to use today, we had a session on this. I think session 18 maybe is on application.worksheet function. If you're looking to um, yeah, use a formula in VBA effectively, then it's always a good idea to do it in the worksheet first. So just to just to refresh yourself and just to you know really solidify in your mind how it all works, because in VBA it's going to be more difficult to put together in the VBA editor. So Let's have person. Now I want position in data set here. Position data set. It's a database, of course, but when I use the word database on the channel, um, it does trigger some people because Excel is not a database, apparently. Um, but a lot of people do use it as a database, of course, as, I, as I've done today. Um, so this cell plus one here. There we go, control D. So that position in the data set, you know, that, that's what I'm interested in in returning here. Okay. So the person, let's quickly knock up a drop down menu here Alt A V V, tab, Alt and down arrow, arrow arrowing down there. Hmm. So arrowing down and then. <laughs> One of my monitors has just uh, has, has just uh, switched off rather annoyingly, so I won't try to. Anyway, yeah, so just create the drop down menu. So we want the source in there. You can see the references going in there. Uh, this is going to be annoying. Okay, that's that seems to be seems to be working. Katie's like, absolutely, Katie. It is like herding cats, and it's even worse now because one of my monitors has just um, had some kind of technical fault. But we should be okay. Right, and Albert's saying, yeah, uh, put the result in a variable of range.find. Yeah, range.find has come up a couple of times uh, in the series. Do I recommend range.find? Uh, it's not something I really use, I have to say, but I have seen people use it. Um, so once again, if you're doing this kind of thing, you know, you're locating data in a data set, then, yeah, it might be worth looking at. It might be something to look at. Okay. What's the chance of this monitor coming back? And just bear with me a second. Okay, guys, hope you're still with me. Hopefully that's going to reset everything, but we'll see. Hmm. Okay, good stuff. Right. It's all part of live broadcasting, of course. Right. I think we're a bit better now. Okay, good. Right. So let's put a person in here. <clears throat> so we said Jeffrey to begin with. Okay. So the position in the data set. So what's the formula here? The match formula. Match formula. Yeah. One of Excel's un unsung heroes. Uh, absolutely. And it gives us the position of a piece of data in a row or a column. So it tells you how far along that column or how far along that row is this piece of data. So, Jeffrey, I select this cell and I can, of course, change the value in that cell and, and the formula will respond to that. Then I've got to select the range here, the column uh, or the row, and then the match type at the end. Hmm. Okay, so this is what we have to put in the match formula. We're saying find this value in this range and then at the end, we say um, we specify exact match because we're using what's called discrete data. We're, we're using text based data with match. It's always a single row or a single column, which might be different to dot find dot find that we, that we mentioned just a second ago. Uh, would that return an, an address? Yeah, I'm not sure. Right. Let's hit OK here. So we've got the position in, in the data set. And we can see yeah, Jeffrey in position six. And we've got Carol there who's in position four. So good stuff. So we're going to put this into VBA now. But as I said, always worth testing the concept in the spreadsheet and just to reinforce how everything works. Because when we do this in VBA, as we're going to see, when we do this in VBA, it can get uh, difficult. It's certainly difficult when you can't find the Visual Basic Editor. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Where's everything gone then? Okay, just trying to locate the Visual Basic Visual Basic Editor here, right? 
try one more time. Okay, right, let's see. I've got a, a little technical problem here, guys. But I'm just going to keep trucking. Let's bring you across here. And yes, we've got the VBA editor. Not yet. Okay, let's save this, close down Excel. You ever get this? If you've got multiple monitors, I get this sometimes. I just completely lose the VBA editor. This is what's happened. So I've just closed down Excel, opening up Excel again. <laughs> okay, it's absolutely right. Yeah, it does have a kind of slapstick feel today. Uh, absolutely. Good. Good observation here from Carol as well. Yeah, in our task, duplicates will give problems. Um, so something to think about. You know, I think you're going to have to solve that one at the... At, at the kind of design and planning level, you know, when you're planning the application, how are we going to deal potentially with with duplicates here? Um, in this situation, yeah, in this situation, you need what's called a unique identifier, don't you? We're, we're doing something very similar to this on, on one of the projects we're working on at the moment, which is for a market research company. It's really interesting what they do. They work for, for big corporates and they survey the customers of big corporates and they just get really honest feedback from the customers about uh, how they're feeling about their companies. That's really useful. Uh, so they have lots of respondents, maybe 100 in a data set. And it, it's a bit like this. They have a first name and a surname. And we need a way of identifying entries, like exactly like what we're doing today. So we don't use the first name, we don't use the surname. What's a unique piece of information that you might have if you've completed an online survey that is totally unique? Yeah, this piece of information, it can only belong to one person on, on, on the planet, pretty much. Yeah, it's it's an email address. Yeah. So an email address is often, often a unique identifier. If you don't have an email address, then I've done things where we have been using Excel as a database. I've combined the first name and the surname in a unique identifier column. That could be a possible approach. Um, there's various other approaches too, but that kind of thing, avoiding duplicates, you're going to try to solve that one, hopefully in the planning stage when you're thinking, what's the data structure here? What column headers uh, do I need? Okay. Yeah, Albert, I did try Windows and Tab. To, to get to the developer and selected it with Windows and Tab, and it still didn't still didn't come back. But anyway, all good now. So what we've done in Excel there, Alt H O W three here. What we've done in Excel there in terms of locating the position, we're now going to do this in VBA. And as I said, if you're managing a data set, you're going to be doing this all the time in our user form series. And I'm sure some people watching today would have come through our user form for beginners series. This is something we have to do. We're using a user form to manage a database. So we've got to locate an entry in that database. So sub, let's go for locate entry here. Okay, I'm going to say routine to locate a target entry in the data set. So I said this the other day, um, these days I'm providing an annotation at the beginning of the routine to remind me what the routine does. Also, as usual, benefiting from the routine, having an informative name. You know, once your file gets quite busy and you go to macros here and you see all the macros listed, and if they're all called Chris, Chris macro, test macro, programmer test, data, you know, it, it's a bit of a nightmare to understand what the macros are doing. So that's why we really need those informative names. And it's another example of a stitch in time saving nine, you know, looking ahead and planning properly, that's the way to de-stress uh, programming, I would say. Okay, so let's try to store this position to a variable. So this position is being expressed numerically. So what variable, variable would be appropriate for this? Variable, one, two, three, four. there's four syllables in variable. Okay. <laughs> I, when, I, when I'm a bit nervous when I'm streaming, I just start saying variable. No, it's variable. There we go. Anyway, what variable type is going to be appropriate here? Well, it's numerical and it's a whole number. So it's going to be an integer variable here. Variable here. So let's say 
<laughs> dim, I'm going to say data position as integer. Here we go. So position in data set of this data, something like that. Okay. Different ways to do this, of course. Um, I can also recommend another session from this series, which I think might have been session 14 or 15. It was in the comeback period. We, we've done this series in two periods, one in 2020 and one this year. In the, the first 2022 installment, I think, was how to locate a date, how to match to a date in a data set. So if this is interesting to you, definitely check that one out as well. Yeah, if you're matching to a date, you might need a different policy, but we uh, talked through all of those um, in that session. Right. So data position equals application.worksheet function we're going to use here. Certainly first, we might have time to do one more. application.worksheet function dot match. Okay. What value do we want to put into the formula here and now it's useful just to be able to reference the formula so i'm benefiting from having put the formula together in the spreadsheet first i can even see that alongside the vba editor so i've got some prompts there to help mm. so with end with is certainly going to help us here so with i'm going to say sheets and then sheet one here And then end with, is this how you're referencing sheets, by the way? Mm. You can also use, use the sheet code name, which I believe is this, uh, th this sheet one here. Um, you can also reference sheets that way. How do you reference your sheets when you're using VBA? Application.worksheet function dot match space and underscore, because I'm going to continue on a new line, not necessary, just doing that for display purposes application.worksheet function dot match. And then we can say dot because we've used with and end with. Excel's going to join together whatever I write now on the end of whatever you're, whatever you've, <laughs> whatever you've written at the top. Yeah, I can't never found a concise way to describe how with end with works. It's connecting together parts of Excel's language. Okay. So dot range. It's I-12, this, isn't it? I-12 there. And then range again. So now the match range is going to be uh, C4 to C13. And then finally, we need zero at the end. I, I, I'm not sure if that's necessary, but we can see the three components there here translated to VBA. When we're using application.worksheet function, we need to express the references in VBA language. And here we've got exactly the same formula expressed formulaically, so expressed in the language that the worksheet understands. Pretty cool. Okay, how are we, how are we looking? Okay. Mm. It, this is a very common error to get um, when you're using match. Well, it's one of Excel's more informative errors, isn't it? It actually tells us that there's a problem with match here. Good. So what's the problem with this? Can we get some live debugging going on? Um, good. Good. Good questions here from Carol. So, so Carol says, why would you not just use a long variable? Well, integer is going to work up to 32,000. In practice, I don't think it's going to make any difference. But I do know integer takes, I think, um, two bytes of Excel's memory. So a tiny, tiny amount of Excel's memory. I think a long variable takes four bytes. So also a tiny amount, but a little bit more. So you could argue if you don't need those larger numbers up to 30,000, then you should use integer because it's marginally more efficient, marginally more efficient. Uh, if you're going above 32,000, you do need to use that long variable. Will that ever make a difference to your career? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But when, you know, I'm often involved with speeding up the efficiency of processes in Excel VBA. I was, I was doing this on Monday morning uh, for one of our customers. And we've got a file where we've actually used uh, a load of the new dynamic, newish dynamic array formulae, uh, which are great in the sense that they avoid having to use a lot of code, but they're bad in the sense you have loads of formulae. Excel is doing lots of work in the workbook and it's really slowing things down. So we're, we're, we're looking to speed that up. Anyway, so if you're thinking about the efficiency of your spreadsheet, then 
these things might matter, you know, making that right variable choice, you know, that that might just matter. Um, and Carol says, yes, I prefer the code name. What's the drawback to using the code name? Mm. So the code name is using this, this language here. And that means whatever the user changes the sheet name to, the sheet code name is going to stay the same. Mm. So you might think, well, Chris, that, that solves everything, doesn't it? Because it means, yeah, whatever the sheet, if the user wants to change the name of the sheet, the VBA is still going to work. What's the one killer drawback to that approach? And it, you, you, won't, you won't feel this drawback unless you've done a fair amount of VBA work in a broad enough context. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So, Carol, if nobody answers, then make sure you put a question in the chat and we'll make sure we deal with that. Uh, good. We've got some answers coming in for this one. And yeah, no one's joined me live this week, guys. You know, I'm sitting here in the East Midlands in the UK. It's just me and Luna today, guys. I've seen nobody else apart from Luna today. Luna, Luna's a flat coat retriever, by the way. Now, we always have a great time. You know, I love I, I love Luna. But uh, yeah, who's going to drop in for a chat today, guys? I've got a meeting at five. Um, but I'd absolutely love to have a chat with someone. What are you getting out of the series? What are you not getting out of the series? What are the gaps that we've got to cover between now and the end of the series? All you've got to do is follow that link that will take you backstage. It's a very simple process. We've had three or four people in so far in this series. We always have people in, in Members Monday. That's Luna, by the way. You might be able to hear her. Perhaps she heard me talking about her on the stream. Uh, yeah, so it'd be great to talk to someone. Just head through there, close down the YouTube interface, and it's a very simple process. I'd, I'd love to have a chat. Good. So what's the problem with this piece of code? And absolutely, Jazz is on the money. So I didn't get this reference right, did I? Did I? Did I? I referenced I-12. I should be referencing H-12 because H-12 contains the value that we're looking to match in this range. So good shout from Jazz. All over that, absolutely good eyesight. Yeah, I mean, doing VBA programming, it really gets you focused on details. It really develops that that rigor, that meticulous um, kind of attitude uh, to your work. So good stuff. And Jeffrey says, if you have nested with, end with, does the inner ends with stop the outer process? Does the inner end with stop the outer process? I know you can have multiple end widths in here. So, so if we had another width here, so I, for example, could say this now with dot range um, H12 here. And then I'd have to put dot value here. And then this one. See, this would now be problematic. This would now be problematic because Excel is going sheet, sheet one, dot range, eight, 12, and then dot range again. So that would be too much. So you can stop Excel doing that by just um, rewriting the sheet name here. Uh, I think that looks okay. Yep. I would need another end with. Now, I haven't annotated my code, and I'm already feeling the stress from not having comments in that. Okay, so this, so definitely with the widths and with the end ifs as well, it's very simple. Make sure you put those, those annotations in with H12 and then with uh, sheet one there. Mm. Okay, so is this going to work? So dot value is just taking the value property from that cell. Okay, big welcome to you, my friend, tuning in. How are you doing and where are you watching uh, from in the in the world? And Jasmine was saying, yeah, you could you could hear Luna. OK, yeah, she's, I put her outside for the live streams usually, but she's, you know, taking care of uh, domestic security as she always does. Right. So what's going to happen now? I'm going to use the F8 key here. You can go debug and step into to do the same thing. How are we going to get that data position? Yes, we are. Got position four there. Okay, let's try Jeffrey now. Let's use message box. And play the code. Now we've got position six. Okay, nice. 
So we've located that uh, within a data set. Um, just our final challenge today, final challenge. Uh, suppose we wanted to change the birthday month. How would we do that? Mm. Okay, so let's make this as realistic as we can. You know, you wouldn't just want to look it up, would you? You'd want to do something with that information. So suppose we wanted to change the birthday month. We've got the position of the entry in the data set. If we wanted to change the birthday month, how would we do that? And these are two partners in crime, these two formally, these two constructs in the worksheets, in the worksheet and in VBA. Hmm. How would we do that? Mm, so we've got the position. Now we want to change the birthday month. Let's suppose we want to change Jeffrey's birthday month to January. Jeffrey's born in January, not April. Hmm. How would we do that? And Carol, yes, yeah, some amazing contributions from Carol in this stream. Carol's absolutely right. Yeah, offset, offset. So match and offset, partners in crime, often working together to get stuff done. We can use offset here. Lee is absolutely right too. Good stuff. So we could say, let's use an anchor cell. That's been a recurring theme this series, hasn't it? So I'm going to say a table anchor here, just using the shorthand technique to create a named range there. And now we can say dot range table anchor dot offset. Okay, how many rows down do we want to go? Well, we've already got that information, haven't we? Data position. And then one, two, one, two. So this is the where we're starting. One column across, two columns across is going to be the birthday month equals month. If we want to change it to January. Okay. So what we should see, you know, blink and you will miss it. But what we should see when we run this code is Jeffrey's <coughs> birthday changing to 1 January. And you just saw it there, but now we it's going to work with anybody now. So we can change Keith here. So just keep an eye on D6, row 6, and we can see Keith changing there. Let's do one more. Let's change Jazz's birthday here. So I'm just clicking in the code and then hitting play at the top, and you can see Jazz's birthday changing there. Cool. So we've created a data set. We've done something you definitely want to, going to want to do if you're managing a data set. Uh, which is to change values within that data set. And as I said, this is only a small scale example. You could do this manually, but if you had a hundreds or thousands of rows, that's definitely something uh, you would want to do. Good and absolutely. Carol says, I like the using the named ranges and anchor cell. Absolutely. And the advantage of using the named range is if somebody goes and puts some rows in or deletes some rows, then because you've used a name range, uh, this code should still work, of course. And Lee says, yes. I use this all the time with odds, find the value of one price and then move up or down a certain number of points to find another value. It's a great piece of coding. Absolutely. So Lee's talking about an application in sports trading, but this is supremely versatile, uh, this technique. You know, wherever you've got data organized in a table, which is what we have, isn't it? It's what we have in spreadsheets. Um, you're going to need to match to that in VBA. You could be doing that in the worksheet as well, using the match and offset formulae. Uh, we've done it in VBA using match with application dot worksheet function dot match and then using the offset method in VBA. So th this isn't the offset formula. We're not saying application dot worksheet function dot offset. We're using the offset method, the native offset method to VBA. But VBA doesn't have, as far as I know, a native uh, match method. Right, guys, if you enjoyed the session, thanks for, so much for watching. And remember, uh, we've got a free session for you. This is a 40 minute long form tutorial called The Secrets of the Random Task Generator, the file that I use to generate our random Excel task at the beginning of each session. Uh, the email link is in the video description below. You just got to go ahead, put your email in and it'll get sent to your inbox. You'll also get an automated email about Members Monday which is our fantastic um, Excel learning community. If you like learning with a group of people like this, you want to do it all year round. We've been doing it for two, two and a half years now, 108 sessions. We had our 108th session yesterday and we've seen amazing results. Uh, we'd love to see you in Members Monday. So yeah, go ahead, sign up, sign up for the random content uh, generator tutorial and you'll get an automated email to your inbox with all 
of the um, details. And thank you for reminding me, Carol, before you know, before we go, what's the drawback of using the code name? Does anybody know? Mm. So somebody explained this to me once, and I was like, this is amazing. Why, why have I never learned about this? Sheet one. The only drawback I know of this, firstly, the, the main advantage is whatever <clears throat> the name of the worksheet is, perhaps we can illustrate this if we go into the properties window at the bottom here. Yeah, the name of the sheet. The sheet name can change, but the sheet code name, which I believe is, is here and here, or, or it might be that one, one of these two is the code name. That never changes. So, and that code name you can reference, and, and you, you reference it like this. You just say sheet one. It's a little bit confusing because the name of our sheet is um, sheet one, which is a little bit confusing. So let's deconfuse. There you go. New word, new word for the English language. Let's deconfuse by renaming this sheet. And we can see, yeah. So sheet one is the code name. Then what's in brackets is the, the user given name for this sheet. So whatever the user's typed in here. And we can see that again uh, in the properties window down here. So you can actually reference this code name, which means it doesn't matter what the sheet is called. That's pretty cool, but but Jazz has got the answer. Yeah, good idea, Jeffrey, but I think code name will still work. And good idea from Carol as well. Yep, you can use the properties down here to make the changes, but Jazz is on the money here. This doesn't work if the spreadsheet, if the Excel file is opened in with Windows set to another language. So we came across this, I think, in our Members Monday learning community, Members Monday. Uh, we have a member in Denmark, I believe, somewhere in Scandinavia, in Denmark, and this wasn't working. I think it was actually the reverse situation. I think this person was in Denmark, and this was in Danish, and then I opened it on my system, and it was still in Danish. Yeah. Or, or rather, because I opened it, no, this is it. Because, I, yeah, I opened it on my system. This became English, but what was in the code remained Danish. Yeah. So if you're using Excel in different languages, just look out for that one. Okay. That could really trip you up if you're working for an, for an international uh, customer. Very good. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm going to have to get going because I've got a prospective client meeting at five o'clock. got a couple of things to do. Uh, but as always, thanks so much for your company, guys. We'll be back same time, same place tomorrow. So four o'clock Wednesday for more from the XL VBA 30 Real World Problems and Solutions series. Thanks again, guys. Take care. See you tomorrow.